More Chinese communication companies blacklisted, officially deemed a threat to America's national security. U.S. lawmakers pushing to decouple from China. That call part of efforts to counter the Chinese Communist Party. Could be one of our greatest allies in the world, but never as long as the Chinese government is in charge. A key U.S. agency is getting a new climate cop, one who studied at a Beijing-controlled university. We dig into the officials' China ties. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Chenny Wu, in for Tiffany Meyer. More Chinese communication companies are officially deemed a threat to U.S. national security. The Federal Communications Commission added China Unicom and Pacific Network Comnet to the list, based on advice from security agencies. This solidifies a previous decision to ban services and equipment from those companies in the U.S. The two companies are subsidiaries of a Chinese state-owned entity. The FCC found in March that they are subject to exploitation, influence and control by the Chinese regime. The agency says Pacific Network Comnet could give the Chinese Communist Party opportunities to, quote, access, monitor, store and in some cases disrupt and or misroute U.S. communications. Likewise, the FCC found in 2015 that China Unicom has the capability to listen in on phone calls and track the locations of its users. As the White House once more walks back President Biden's vow to defend Taiwan against the Chinese invasion, lawmakers and activists are warning against the threat Beijing poses to the U.S. NTD's Iris Tao has more on a forum at the Capitol. It is unbelievable how much funding we are doing of a communist country. Calling to decouple from China, Congressman Louis Gomer joins a Tuesday forum inside the U.S. Capitol to highlight threats posed by the Chinese Communist Party. The problem with communism is atheism. Government must be God. And so people aren't free to seek and look for truth. But I'm asking this question for myself, are we really free or not? Also speaking at the forum, NBA free agent and human rights activist Ennis Cantor Freedom. He shares about the pressure he faced here inside the U.S. for speaking out against Beijing. In game, one of my teammates woke up to me in a locker room and said, you know this is your last year in NBA, right? Like, you know, you talk about the Chinese government, you talk about, you're calling out Nike, you're calling out some of the players who are bowing down to these dictatorships, your career is over. Freedom tells NTD that China is undermining freedoms in the U.S. by infiltrating Wall Street, NBA, Hollywood, and even government institutions. No one can invade uh, USA from the outside but they're trying to invade USA from the inside. Meanwhile, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi on Monday called for greater cooperation between the two countries, saying it will benefit both China and the U.S. But Congressman Gomert says this about China. This could be one of our greatest allies in the world, could be our greatest ally, but never as long as the Chinese government is in charge. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Iris Tao, NTD News. A key bureau under the Treasury Department is getting a new chief climate officer. The new climate cop, Yuanina Chen, studied at a Communist Party-controlled university in China. NTD's Julia Song has more on that. The department Chen works for is crucial. It's called the Office of the Controller of the Currency. The bureau is America's banking regulator. It supervises and regulates all national banks, federal savings associations, and federal branches of foreign banks. Yue Chen's responsibilities include focusing on climate risk management frameworks for the federal banking system. She will report to acting controller Michael Su. Chen got her bachelor's degree from China's Tsinghua University. The university hosts laboratories linked to the Chinese military. And one of its key research areas is defense, including missiles and artificial intelligence. It's also supervised by a defense industry agency for the Chinese Communist Party. 
The regime controls Tsinghua University through a Communist Party committee. In a speech this July, the head of the committee, Chou Yong, reminded all of the party members about the importance of being loyal to the Communist Party. He said he hopes all party members will forever take the party's leadership, direction, and will as their own. It's unclear if Yue Chen is a Communist Party member. NTD has reached out to the office of the Comptroller of the Currency, but did not immediately receive a reply. Juliet Song, NTD News. China is lashing out over new activity in the Indo-Pacific. That's amid heightened Taiwan tensions. On Wednesday, Beijing warned the U.S. to stop being a troublemaker. The comment takes aim at the U.S. and Canadian warships that sailed through the Taiwan Strait on Tuesday. That's after President Biden said the U.S. would defend Taiwan if China launched an invasion. The trip was the second in one month by a U.S. Navy ship. The U.S. Navy says the cooperation with Canada represents its approach to a secure and prosperous region. Canada's defense minister said it demonstrates commitment to a free, open Indo-Pacific. Taiwan's foreign ministry welcomed the action. China has said it aims to achieve a so-called reunification with Taiwan. A Chinese regime spokesperson referred to that prospect as peaceful on Wednesday. This following weeks of military maneuvers and war games by Beijing near the island. Let's zoom in. The spokesperson from China's Taiwan Affairs Office described complete reunification as a must for Beijing, though he didn't give details on a time frame. He also promised Taiwan could have a social system different from the mainland, one that ensures their way of life is respected, including religious freedoms. But he noted that was under the precondition of ensuring national sovereignty, security and development interests. It's not the first time China has made this kind of promise. Before Britain handed Hong Kong over to Chinese rule in 1997, Beijing committed to upholding the Sino-British Joint Declaration. The agreement stated that Hong Kong would enjoy a high degree of autonomy for at least 50 years and guaranteed freedoms not enjoyed in mainland China. But 25 years later, the financial hub saw increasing arrests of pro-democracy activists and suppression of freedom of speech. As for the term reunification, Communist China has never ruled Taiwan. The island's officials say Beijing's sovereignty claims are void. Hong Kong police arrested a man who paid tribute to Queen Elizabeth. He was taken in for alleged sedition. The man was seen playing songs on a harmonica, including a tune called Glory to Hong Kong. It's the anthem of the pro-democracy protests that rocked the city in 2019. A crowd gathered and sang along as the man played. Police said he was detained late Monday near the British consulate in Hong Kong. He's being investigated on suspicion of what authorities called committing an act with seditious intent, as dozens of people had gathered to remember the late monarch. Queen Elizabeth ruled the city before 1997 when the then British colony was handed over to Chinese rule. America and its allies are looking to counter China's influence in the Pacific. Among the latest efforts, joint drills have launched in Fiji, an island country in the South Pacific. Let's take a closer look. Also joining the drill, Britain, Australia and New Zealand. The military exercise is aimed at countering Beijing's growing influence in the region. Uh, We now face challenges that need a collective whole to address. We address them together. Competition between Beijing and the U.S. in the region has intensified since the Chinese regime signed a security deal with the Solomon Islands. The West is concerned that the deal could pave the way for a Chinese military base just 1,000 miles off Australia's coast. Both the Solomon Islands and China deny the possibility, but the island country has grown closer to China. In August, the Solomon Islands briefly blocked foreign naval vessels from docking at its ports. When I talk about threats, I talk about natural disasters. I talk about illegal fishing, and I talk about uh, other traditional non-state actors which try and, um, and um, destabilize this part of the world. The drill is set to wrap up this Friday. Meanwhile, Australia is taking steps to increase engagement with the region. It plans to set up a defense school to train neighboring armies. That's in response to China's potential military presence in the Solomon Islands. 
Leaders of the UK and Japan have resolved to work together to counter the threat from communist China. The agreement was reached on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in New York. The UK's new Prime Minister Liz Truss just concluded a meeting with her Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida. According to a spokesman, she condemned China's provocations towards Taiwan, which are also a threat to Japan's special economic zones. Both leaders agreed to work together in the face of the threat from China. They also agreed that cooperation among democracies is important to tackle both economic and security threats from authoritarian regimes. The UK and Japan are among the most important US allies in Europe and Asia. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here, after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Fentanyl kills over 100,000 people in a year in the U.S., and most of the drug's precursors come from China. What makes stopping its flow into the U.S. so difficult? And today's Tiffany Meyer sat down with Anders Kaur, publisher of the Journal of Political Risk, to learn more about the political and economical factors involved. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Chenny Wu, and see you tomorrow. Shen Yun Creations, the streaming platform from Shen Yun, featuring world-class dance, past programs, and all original music. Masterclasses, behind the scenes, comedy, and more. Explore shenyuncreations.com.